So I guess that uh, Buzz Lightyear went from uh, going to infinity and beyond to essentially doing this right here. <laughs> So guys, John Claymore here. Now, I want to talk about this just for a quick second. Now, before we start this video, I want to ask you guys a serious question, especially if you're a parent. Uh, when you carry children, especially small children, to a theater to see a Disney movie, you want to see movies that, quite frankly, allow kids to be kids and enjoy themselves. Nothing suggestive, nothing, I guess you could say, woke, preachy. You want them to be able to actually sit down and enjoy themselves. Okay, well, obviously, Disney has chosen with uh, Buzz Lightyear to uh, ignore that and go ahead and push a bit of an agenda. Now, guys, I want to talk about this because, of course, you're probably thinking to yourself, why are you talking about Buzz Lightyear? Well, let me go ahead and break this down. Back in the 1990s, I was basically just a kid. I mean, I was born in 85. Yeah, I'm that old. Us uh, Reagan babies, we grew up in a time that, quite frankly, was the most child-friendly era in American history. Of course, there are also other studies that kind of uh, explain other things that, quite frankly, we'll be doing more topics on a later date, especially if we start talking about generations and society, because this channel is going to become a much more society-driven channel. The thing is this right here. Uh, during the 90s, it was actually a pretty good period. I mean, it really was. I mean, I remember one of the very first things I remember as a kid in the 90s watching was the national championship game between Duke and Kansas. I was only like six years old. And, of course, you know, you had the opening package, you know, the Gulf War, the boys coming back home, that type of thing there. Uh, even though the 90s became a little bit more and more degenerative, it was actually a pretty carefree era. One of those films in the 90s was Toy Story, Disney. Okay, now I was about 10 years old when that movie came out, and I was never really that big of a fan, but I did see the movie as a kid. Quite a wonder to see. I mean, because, quite frankly, Toy Story was, you know, Pretty much a very, very good accomplishment. Tim Allen voiced uh, Buzz Lightyear. We watched Home Improvement as a family when I was younger. That type of thing there. So for the most part, Disney always remained somewhat of a wholesome product, especially Toy Story, even though I only watched the first one when I was like 10. But still, at the same time, it was a movie designed for children. Nothing suggestive, nothing in there that would actually corrode a child's mind, nothing that would actually harm a child. But nowadays, Disney is putting out content that actually does more harm than good. And as you guys are seeing, uh, yeah, parents are starting to catch on to this. You see, a lot of parents may carry their kids to the theater to see Buzz Lightyear. Also, not just for the kids, but for themselves. Because a lot of those parents are my age. They're millennials and, low, and, uh, and early Gen Xers, which means that they're uh, I mean, late-stage Gen Xers, is what I meant to say. They would do that there to have some type of feeling of nostalgia. They don't like the idea of seeing same-sex couples, same-sex people kissing and making out in these films. Okay, They just don't like to see that. But of course, when you have high gas prices, inflation, people's situation getting a lot worse. And of course, you've got somebody, say Dean Norris, for example, telling us to suck it the fuck up. And then, of course, you get Captain America or former Captain America Chris Evans, a guy who at one time I used to respect. And by the way, guys... We can all be, I mean, if you're, if you're a liberal, that's okay. It's when you take things a little bit too far is when I got a bit of an issue, okay? But here's his response to parents saying no to this film. You do something about representation or diversity or whatever, you sure. always push back. Um, I mean, what would you, I mean, how would you counter that, I suppose? Well, I mean, the real truth is those people are idiots. I mean, I think throughout history, you can see every time there's been social advancement as we wake up i mean the 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 american story the human story is is one of constant social awakening and growth and that's that's what that's what makes us good and and you know when that happens there's always going to be people who are uh afraid and uh, uh unaware and and trying to hold on to what was before but those people die off like dinosaurs. And so, you know, I think the, the goal is to pay them no mind, march forward and, and, and embrace the growth that makes us human. First point I gotta answer is uh, us going the way of the dinosaur. Uh, Chris, it doesn't look like we're the ones going the way of the dinosaur here, Bubba. First of all, you're the one who's losing money off this product. You're the one who's losing popularity off this product because you're going after our kids. Number two, it's not, progressive to go after children it really and truly is not the other half of that little clip was the lady saying this right here is like going to infinity and beyond 
Okay, infinity and beyond in what way? Going bankrupt? That's not infinity and beyond. If anything, you're proving our points. We're proving that you're actually killing your own product. This is one of the reasons why I say, guys, it's best to just simply unsubscribe and not boycott. Just simply unsubscribe and just walk away and not go back. You see, Disney's creating an actual trap here where people cannot trust them even if they do choose to change their content. Now, I talked about this before in the video about groomers. I talked about that. And I talked about how Disney itself was eventually going to collapse on this because they're, they're putting themselves on the heel of down. By the way, Disney also attacked their fans over Star Wars and saying that their fans were racist. Really? Bro, you don't attack your fan base. You don't attack the people that actually come to watch the film. Also, to go on top of that, you don't try to groom their children. You don't put this crap out here. By the way, guys, Chris Evans has proven himself over the years to be just this great big giant beta. I mean, dude, why can't we have somebody who's actually like, and by the way, they could be a freaking lib if they want to, but why can't we have some unwoke, um, unwoke man actually play these roles, these, these roles of actual strength, which is what Captain America was, but instead, we got a liberal beta male douche. I mean, dude, what a douchebag to actually attack your fans. I mean, we're going to go the way of the dinosaur. Look, I hate to tell you this, Chris, but uh, the woke left is beginning to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So maybe it's you people, you guys, who are becoming those dinosaurs who are aging out as other people are waking up and seeing the sad, sad reality of what is going on in today's society. And of course, you're not paying attention if you'd actually talk to fans, if you'd actually understood, taking time to look at people and actually get their opinions. You might not be such a freaking dumbass. Guys, John Claymore here. If you like this content, hit the like button, subscribe, share the video. This video right here will also be up this afternoon, as well as the one with uh, the Leah Thomas video, of course, she being banned, as you guys are seeing the end card right here. Uh, that video will be out this afternoon to go along with this one right here, and there'll be another video out on short time of prepping about what happened in Texas this past weekend, and I will see you guys later. <laughs>